everybody, today I'm coming to you with my... What, what month is it? Hello everybody, so today I'm coming to you with my June wrap-up and my July TBR. So I thought I didn't read that many books in June because of all the VidCon madness, which I actually fell very behind on my Goodreads reading challenge. I fell four books behind and I'm so ashamed. Like, it feels like so bad when I fall that far behind because I'm like, oh, I've never been this far behind on a Goodreads challenge before. I'm usually really good at keeping up to date with it, but with so much stuff going on right now, it's been very difficult. But I shall catch up because I shall read a hundred books this year. It's gonna happen. But anyways, I thought I didn't read as many books as I thought I did. So I'm very happy with what I read this month, and they were pretty entertaining reads, so let's get into it. So the first book I read this month was Named of the Dragon by Susanna Kearsley. This book was very, very good. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. It was a very, very solid read that I really enjoyed, and it was very magical, but also very realistic at the same time. This book is about a woman named Lynn, and she's a literary agent who decides to go off to South Wales on a vacation during holiday break. And while she's there, she she starts having these nightmares of a child and a woman that need her help and she does not know why or what's going on. And so it's about her uncovering the mystery of these people and also uncovering the mystery that is taking place in reality that she is currently in. And there's like Merlin folklore in this which I really enjoyed. It was all around just a very solid great book. It had a little bit of romance in it, a lot of mystery, and a lot, a lot of awesomeness. The next book I read was Rebel of the Sands by Alwyn Hamilton. I gave this book also a 4 out of 5 stars. It was a very solid read. I enjoyed it. It was only like I think 300 pages long and I listened to it mainly an audiobook which I really enjoy because as you guys know I like listening to audiobooks. It's how I'm keeping up with my Goodreads reading challenge or else I would have been like you know 20 books behind schedule. It's about a girl named Amani and she lives in this desert western town in the middle of nowhere and she's only known this life because she is very very unhappy with where she lives because when you're a girl in this town that she lives in you either end up wed or dead and nothing in between. You have two choices. But she wants to choose her own destiny and she's a very gifted gunslinger and she decides to run off on a magical horse with this guy one day who is just a passerby in town and they end up going on this grand adventure and they find out that like she has powers and it's about her uncovering her powers and figuring out what the future has in store for her. The next book is I'll Meet You There by Heather Demetrios and as you guys know I've wanted to read this book for a very very long time. It's always been my TBR I feel like but I finally got around to reading it and it was so phenomenal. I gave it a 4.5 out of 5 stars. It was just a very solid, amazing read, and it really made you think about life and made you really grateful for the life that you do live. Because it showed you the hardships of two main characters in this novel that were very different from one another, but also they were able to lean on each other in the difficult times that they went through in this book. So this book is about Skylar Evans, and she lives in Creekview, which is a small town in the middle of nowhere, California. And she really wants to go off to art school, but that is until her mom loses her job and she needs to, you know, make up for that money. Her mom actually goes into a depression that leads Skylar to question if she actually can go out to school and leave her mom in the state because her father and they have severe money issues they're in severe debt and it's really a difficult you know position for Skylar as an 18 year old who just wants to go off to college but is being held back by you know difficulties at home but then she rekindles a relationship a friendship with Josh and Josh just came back from Afghanistan after losing a leg in war and Josh he has his own type of depression he has his own type of PTSD and he is struggling you know getting back into civilian life life after being at war for so long. And Josh, he actually also leans on Skylar as Skylar leans on Josh because they actually help each other through this difficult time for both of them. And then there's a romance that comes about and it's a very, very good read and I really enjoyed it. So I told you guys I would read this next book because I was curious as to where the storyline was going. I'm not gonna lie about that. And that was Girl Online on Tour by Zoe Sugg. And it was not that bad. It's actually a better read than the last book. The last book I actually did not like really at all. It was a very basic read, but this one actually actually had an improvement to it. I mean, when I say improvement, it's not like a huge improvement, but it was an improvement and that's what counts. I listened mainly to the audiobook of it, which I do not really recommend. The audiobook isn't actually that good, so I recommend you actually read the book, but I didn't really have time to read the book because I was trying to read two books at the same time to catch up with my reading goal. Still failed at that. Yeah. But yes, this just carries on the story of Penny and her boyfriend Noah, and I think that was a very interesting storyline, but it was very predictable, and I ended up not liking Noah whatsoever. Peggy, Penny, Penny, <laughs> Peggy. 
Penny's character was very difficult to handle at the beginning because she was not making the right choices for herself and was mainly thinking about others but I can very much relate to that because honestly I think about others before myself a lot of the time so she was doing the same thing so I was like you know what that's actually very realistic and she also struggled with anxiety which I thought was very important because I myself struggle with anxiety so it's really nice to kind of see that being portrayed in these novels because that's one thing that I really do like about these books that they handle anxiety in a very truthful way and then I thought that no was just annoying little prick so <laughs> still think that was not happy with any of this book because of certain things that went down but it's very predictable as to what the ending was and I want to know if she's gonna make a third book because I don't know where she would go with a third book three out of five stars and the last book that I read this month was it wasn't always like this by Joey Preble and this book was actually a very interesting read because it kind of had to handle with the fountain of youth theory which is when you go to a fountain of youth and you drink its waters and you become immortal forever yeah so it's very nice and that's what this girl and this guy Charlie and Emma go through. They're born in the very early 1900s and then all of a sudden their family goes and moves to Florida together and they own like an alligator farm and it's kind of like a zoo type thing in Florida. And while they're there they end up drinking from this river that turns out to be the Fountain of Youth which immortalizes them for quite a many few years. That is until their parents and their siblings and their families are killed and the only survivors of this massacre by the Church of Light which are these like crazy crazy people are Charlie and Emma and they end up having to survive for the next hundred years actually separate from one another. And it's about them kind of coming back together and meeting each other in the middle after a hundred years apart. And it's a very interesting book because it also handles with mystery about why this Church of Light folk are killing off so many girls that look like Emma and so many boys that look like Charlie. And it was a very interesting read. It was good. I think that it should have had a better ending because the ending was very rushed and I wish it was kind of more satisfying, but it was a pretty good book. I gave it a 3.5 five out of five stars I believe. Now on to the books I shall be reading next month. Well this month technically yeah this month July. So since I'm going to be at a lot of conventions this month and I'm doing lots of revisions with Zenith my book I have a lot to handle and that means not a lot of reading will probably get done. So I'm giving myself a less of a TBR this month just so I don't have to stress out about it. So I'm bringing this book on from last month to this month because I really would like to read it and that is The Problem with Forever by Jennifer L. Armitrout. This book is about a girl named Mal who is in foster care her whole entire life until she gets a family and she's already been through a lot in her life. She's been through hell and back and you know what? She thinks that staying silent is the best weapon. But then she gets adopted and she moves from being a homeschool to being in public school her senior year of high school and there she meets a long lost friend named Ryder Stark and it's about them dealing with difficulties in both their lives and kind of helping one another and really just being there for each other in difficult times especially even if life seems great for Mallory because she's been adopted and she has a finally a good life you know not everything's perfect and she is like lots of demons in her past that she needs to handle with and same goes with Ryder so it seems like a very beautiful very awesome and very thoughtful novel and I cannot wait to jump in and read it I love Jennifer L. Armentrout books I never have disliked any of them they're always solid the next book is Mistborn book one the final empire by Brandon Sanderson I've heard so much about this book series like from everybody I think it's such a funny name that they called like the first book final Empire because that seems like a last book title so I got really confused when I got it I'm like did I get the last book in the series again because it's happened to me so many times I don't know how I'm just like drawn to getting the last book in series when I haven't even read the first <sighs> struggle. Struggle is real. So this book is about a girl named Saka. I'm probably pronouncing her name wrong but it, it looks like Saka and she is a street urchin that has to master this ability to control mists born. This whole entire summary on the back of this book is so vague guys so I'm gonna try my hardest to explain it to you guys. So it's about this girl, she's a street urchin and urchin, urchin, she's an urchin, then let's call her that. She's a street urchin who must learn to master allomancy, the power of a misborn. So that's really interesting. I'm not sure what that is but we're gonna be finding out about when I start read it. And she lives in this kingdom that has been really oppressed for a thousand years and for a thousand years ash fell and for a thousand years the ska Oh, a Ska. Oh, that's not her name. Ska's not her name. Oh my gosh, guys, I'm awful. Ska is actually, like, her type of people. So this girl, not sure what her name is, but she is a part of the Ska, and they've been slaved in misery and lived in fear for a thousand years. In a thousand years, like, this Lord Ruler reigned with absolute power and ultimate terror. Divinely, it's about how this girl, who's a street urchin from the Ska, she actually has to go master this 
Mistborn power and defeat this Dark Lord who is really reigning terror over these people for so long. It's about time his reign comes to a close. And I've heard so many amazing things about this book, guys. Like, this is one of the book series that I see everywhere and everybody talking about it and saying how amazing it is and how empowering it is and how just wonderful it is. And I'm so excited to finally be reading a Brandon Sanderson book because I've not read one yet. And I know, I, I, it's a shame, but I'm gonna be doing it this month, guys. So I'm super excited. And lastly, I shall be reading A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin and yes it's finally happening. I am not going to be actually physically reading it. I have the audiobook and I decided just to listen to that because it's supposed to be a great audiobook and it's a big book and I think it'll be fun to listen to it throughout this month because it's something you know I like to do and plus I'm having severe Game of Thrones hangover because that season finale guys. <gasps> Literally, guys, like, Game of Thrones is a uh, pay. Okay, everybody, so that is my wrap-up and TBR. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you want to check out any of these books, I'll be linking them all down below. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!